This week on The Watchmen, we travel to the edge of a terrorist stronghold, Israel's border with southern Lebanon, home to one of the world's most notorious terror groups, Hezbollah. This is one of the most important strongholds of the Iranians in the Middle East, in Lebanon. Former Israeli intelligence official Avi Melamed is back to break down one of America and Israel's most dangerous enemies. It's The Watchmen. It's Christians United for Israel only on TBN. Welcome to the Watchmen, and welcome to what could be called the edge of the civilized world. I'm standing in the northernmost part of Israel along the border with Lebanon, and just a few hundred yards over my shoulder, a stone's throw away, is Hezbollah country. That's right, southern Lebanon, a Hezbollah stronghold. I guess you could call it, folks, western Tehran, in a sense, because the Iranian regime, through its proxy Hezbollah, has set up shop all along these beautiful villages here. It's such a beautiful landscape, right? But beneath the beautiful landscape lurks something very dark, and that is Hezbollah. Southern Lebanon has been Hezbollah's stronghold for years. In 2006, for instance, only a decade ago, a major war between Israel and Hezbollah. Some of these homes that you see in this seemingly peaceful, quiet village were used to store weapons, rockets, and missiles for Hezbollah. Missiles and rockets are launched from these villages in conflicts against Israel and Hezbollah altogether has, according to some accounts, 80,000 rockets and missiles. According to other accounts, as many as 150,000 rockets and missiles pointed at every inch of the Jewish state. The Hezbollah rocket and missile range literally blankets all of Israel, but it really all starts right here where I'm standing on the border with southern Lebanon. And this area, southern Lebanon, is really the centerpiece of Iran's regional plans. The Iranian regime right now, folks, is marching across the Middle East, whether it's in Lebanon, whether it's in Iraq, in Yemen, in Syria, Iran is expanding its influence, and as a result, Hezbollah, its proxy, which is was created by Iran in 1982, which is funded by Iran, it is an arm of the Iranian regime. As a result of Iran's growing regional strength, Hezbollah is also going to grow stronger. Again, looks like a very peaceful place, but as you will learn today from our good friend Avi Melamed, one of the world's leading intelligence and Middle East experts, something very, very dark lurks beneath here in southern Lebanon. So much more coming up from the edge of the civilized world, Hezbollah country, this week here on The Watchmen. Ever since 9-11, Americans have become all too familiar with names like Al-Qaeda and ISIS. Yet there is another terror group that may be even more dangerous. No Hezbollah operatives are here. The question is whether these Hezbollah operatives have the capacity to carry out attacks in the homeland and how quickly they can become fully operational. According to Congressman Peter King, U.S. officials believe there are hundreds of Hezbollah operatives on U.S. soil. It's another sign of the group's growing global reach. Over the years, Hezbollah has carried out deadly terror attacks in Europe and Latin America. Its bloody history also includes the 1983 Marine Barracks bombing in Beirut, in which 143 U.S. soldiers were killed by a Hezbollah suicide bomber. With the backing of its sponsor, Iran, Hezbollah has set up its own mini-state in southern Lebanon on Israel's border. Not surprisingly, it shares Iran's burning desire to wipe Israel off the map. 
Israeli officials believe Hezbollah has stockpiled up to 150,000 rockets and missiles in its Lebanon home base, ready for use in future conflicts against Israel. I think more and more there is realizations in the West that such flammable areas in the end of the day could set huge fire not only within the areas but outside the areas. Avi Melamed is a former Israeli intelligence official and author of the new book Inside the Middle East. He joins us today on Israel's border with southern Lebanon to break down the Hezbollah threat to Israel and the West. Avi, this is such a beautiful landscape. We were commenting before we started, started the interview here, uh, but what is Hezbollah doing here in southern Lebanon. I guess, where do we begin, right? This is Hezbollah's stronghold. This is Hezbollah country. Yes, actually, and I think the, the good way to put it is to say that the Hezbollah, to a large extent, is serving the Iranian interest in this region. Actually, yeah. the Hezbollah became the most powerful and important proxy of the Iranian and the one that was enhancing very much the Iranian expanding policy in the region. To the point, actually, to a large extent, the real boss in Lebanon is not the Lebanese government, it's rather the Iranian themselves. I said this is Hezbollah Central. I should have said this is Tehran West, really, when you think about it. This is, it has become an Iranian satellite state. And Avi, that's no coincidence, right? Because Iran has a bullseye on Israel. And what better way to get at Israel than to set up shop on Israel's northern border here in Lebanon? Yes, Eric, this is a very accurate uh, observation. Look, unfortunately, in the last generation, the Iranian regime was very skillfully able to um, execute a very well-structured plan to expand its influence in different parts of the Middle East. And the major card he was playing with was the whole issue of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Under this slogan, the Iranian regime was able actually to build himself a stronghold in different parts of the Middle East this is one of the most important strongholds of the Iranians in the Middle East, yeah. in Lebanon, through the Hezbollah that was established by the Iranians in the beginning of the 80s. And today, as a fact, the very long, massive investments of the Iranians in the Hezbollah in Lebanon have been very well paid off. As far as the Iranians are concerned, they do have today a large influence of what's going on in Lebanon. Yeah, and we were talking before the interview, you pointed out some of these buildings here, right in front of us, on Israel's border. You're saying, you know what? Iranian money has paid for some of these buildings. Correct. You are an intelligence pro, Avi. You've been around the block and then some in the intelligence world. What kind of activities are going on right here? Well, we have, we have to remember the south part of Lebanon is, consists of something like, roughly speaking, 200 different villages, mostly rural areas. Most of the population in south part of Lebanon are Shiites. South part of Lebanon is the major stronghold of Hezbollah, politically speaking, in addition to other places in Lebanon. South part of Lebanon, under Hezbollah's direct rule, sort of speaking, became, to a large extent, a one big massive fortress military compound, sort of speaking, where villages, regular villages, in the end of the day, became a very fortress and fortified uh, military compound. You know that we know that there are bunkers in private buildings. We know that there are huge networks of tunnels connecting the in, homes. in homes. We know tunnels, that, uh, unbelievable. We know that the Israeli intelligence provided an open proof, sort of speaking, showing how people are storing in their home rockets and missiles and advanced weapons and so forth and so forth. So actually, what we're looking here is something which is amazing, where. A military organization guided by a very extreme ideology, the Hezbollah, is basically turning a civil infrastructure into one big massive military infrastructure that is supposed to be activated in the time where the Hezbollah and the Iranians actually will decide to activate yeah. it. it. It's a war machine here in southern Lebanon, a Hezbollah-Iranian war machine, Avi, and we saw the bitter fruits of that. Back in 2006, we're coming up on the 10-year anniversary of the Lebanon War, where Israel went at it uh, with Hezbollah. It's it's surreal to me almost, Avi, because this is this is Israeli territory we're standing on right now, and literally right in front of us is Lebanon and, and Hezbollah territory. Uh, this was kind of a flashpoint in 2006 during that war, right? Uh, towns like Matula, Kiryat Shimona, uh, the town we're in right now here in Israel. These were heavily affected by those Hezbollah rockets and missiles, right? What kind of action did we see here in northern Israel? Well, what happened during the war is that as an outcome of the indiscriminately shooting of thousands of rockets by the Hezbollah into massively populated towns and cities. By the way, Haifa, the area of Tel Aviv, also areas that are exposed to this uh, threat, 
uh, people actually have to run for shelters. And basically, Israel has to build a whole methodology, a whole uh, way of dealing with this enormous threat. Because if you try to think about it in the States, if you think about even a small state in the States that is being exposed to such a threat, and you have to basically secure millions of civilians in a reality where uh, where rockets and missiles are pouring down on their homes and malls and schools and kindergartens, yeah. you can imagine what kind of an energy and resources it sure. takes in order to be able to provide civilians the protection they have to be guaranteed with. That 2006 war, Avi, lasted for weeks and weeks, and there were Israelis living in shelters for weeks and weeks. And folks, for an American audience, I want you to understand what this means. Picture what Avi, the scenario Avi is laying out, a very real scenario, we saw a part of it in 2006. Hezbollah has rearmed in the decades since then. Imagine uh, a terror group in Mexico or Canada on America's borders, armed to the teeth with tens of thousands of rockets and missiles pointed at every inch of the United States. What would we do? Well, Israel is facing that situation right now. These Hezbollah rockets stationed just yards from where I'm standing right now literally can hit every inch of the Jewish state. There's really no place to escape this, to run and hide. Israel has, through Iran, who supplies many of these rockets and missiles, uh, Hezbollah has blanketed Israel. And by the way, as an American, why you should care about this, Hezbollah has killed more Americans, yes, Americans, than any terror group other than Al-Qaeda. Hezbollah is an avowed enemy, not only of Israel, but of America as well. Key point to remember there. Coming up more with Avi Melamed, author of Inside the Middle East from the Lebanon border, Hezbollah country. It's The Watchman, only with Christians United for Israel and only on TBN. Stick around. We see it all over the internet, newspapers, and television as terror groups like ISIS, Hezbollah, and Hamas terrorize Israel. Each year, the threat increases and intensifies. Will you pray for Israel? Will you confront government officials on behalf of Israel and the Jewish people? How will you answer God if you choose to do nothing? To see evil and not call it evil is evil. Not to speak is to speak. Not to act is to act. God will not hold us harmless. Stand up and speak up and do it now. Join KUFA, where 2.5 million Christians across the U.S. are working together to defend Israel in our classrooms, churches, and communities. They have an active presence in over 300 college campuses and mobilize their members to communicate pro-Israel perspectives to elected officials. Visit our website, cufi.org. Sheikh Hassan Nasrallah, the leader of Hezbollah, has also made a lot of noise about potentially invading or doing some kind of incursion on the ground into Israel, maybe the Galilee region, maybe a town like we're standing in right now. How feasible is that? Could there be a scenario that Hezbollah tries to uh, do, not a full-scale invasion, obviously, but a pretty significant ground incursion in the next conflict? It is very likely, and we have to take very seriously the, the, the announcements that Nasrallah is making. We know that whenever he says something, he means that. Yeah. And the visibility, again, Eric, we are standing here, you could see it for yourself. Sometimes the distance between the next by Israeli community and the next by Lebanese community is less than a mile. Yeah. So if a group of Hezbollah will try to storm in into a next by Israeli community, this is a very likely possibility. Yeah. It's a very viable possibility. These communities are on top of each other, literally. I yes. mean, we're, we're right just, next door, Lebanon, yeah. it's right there. If I want to go get a falafel in Lebanon yeah. right now, I could walk over and get it. You know, some of them are even rubbing shoulders, sort of yes. speaking. And it's very close one to the other, and we, have to, and we are yeah. taking it very seriously, so we should, because the, the motivation of the Hezbollah to do something like that is because of what we call the triumph picture. If the Hezbollah will be able to infiltrate Israeli territory, to take over even for a couple of hours an Israeli yeah. community, that will be the triumph picture that the Hezbollah and its leaders are seeking and Public looking for. Public relations coup. It's all about PR, it's all about right. the image, it's all about making yourself the name. By the way, it is the very same philosophy that guides Hamas that you mentioned earlier. Yeah in the southwest part of Israel because yeah. Iran and Hezbollah are the mentors of Hamas. And Hezbollah takes it to a level even beyond Hamas, it seems, Much bigger. Um, with their arms. Amazing to me, Avi, as you look across the region, 
Iran works always through proxies, whether it's Hamas, Islamic Jihad, uh, Hezbollah, and they really have never been held accountable, I guess you would say, for all the havoc and the mayhem they've caused. You mentioned, you know, they're sitting back in Tehran, they're feeling pretty good about themselves. You know, so uh, in the next conflict, how does it look? Because you know it's coming. Unfortunately, we, God forbid, but we know eventually, maybe 10 years from now, eventually it's gonna break out again with Hezbollah. Um, how does that next conflict look? It looks pretty nasty, I would think. And I wonder how much Iran directly gets involved or pays a price as a result of that conflict going forward. Well, you uh, very accurately, you pointed out, Eric, unfortunately, the Iranian Mullah regime has been sitting quite, uh, you know, comfortable in Tehran for the last generation. He is activating yeah. proxies. He's paying money for proxies. He's funding and financing. And actually, when you look at the picture, for the last generation, this regime is cynically and gladly sacrificing Israelis and Palestinians and Lebanese and Syrians and Iraqis and Afghans that are fighting for the regime in Syria. We talked about it while this, sit, this regime is sitting very safe and sound in, in Tehran. The assumption is that the next round is around the corner. Nobody says or knows exactly when. As of now, we know that the Hezbollah is very much pre-engaged in Syria and actually is sinking in the Syrian mud. Mm -hmm. So the basic assumption is that the Hezbollah, as of now, is not going to open in another confrontation at the same time uh, or another front with Israel. It's not the Hezbollah's interest, it's not the Iranian interest. But at the same time, we know that the Hezbollah, though, engaged in the war in Syria, the Hezbollah maintains and develops its strategic capacities that in the end of the day are supposed to be used against Israel, obviously according to the Iranian instruction. What happens in the Middle East does not stay in the Middle East, like you said, Avi. This is going to spill over. By, by the end, I think it's going to touch everywhere what's happening here. And one last thought, one last scary thought. Folks, imagine Hezbollah, as bad as they are now, rockets, missiles carrying out terror attacks around the world. Imagine how emboldened and powerful Hezbollah could be if they had an Iranian nuclear umbrella to operate under. Iran is driving towards a nuclear weapon. That, that's, that's the granddaddy. That's Hezbollah's patron, the Iranian regime. If Iran gets a nuclear bomb, that just empowers emboldens Hezbollah even more. Avi Melamed, thank you so much, my friend. As always, pick up the book, Inside the Middle East. More to come. Stick around. Israel's fight is our fight. We are one. We are united. We will not be discouraged. We will not be defeated. We will not be intimidated. We will not sit down. We will not be silent. We are the worst nightmare of the anti-Semites of the world. The victory is going to be ours. Join the largest pro-Israel organization in the U.S. for the 2016 KUFI Summit in Washington, D.C., July 18th and 19th. You will hear numerous experts and have an opportunity to meet face to face with your government representatives and express your support for Israel. Visit our website, cufi.org, and register today for the 2016 KUFI Summit in Washington, D.C. We're telling you today, folks, about the horrific threat that Hezbollah poses to Israel. Tens of thousands of rockets and missiles pointed at every inch of the Jewish state. Well, despite being under constant threat by the likes of Hezbollah, Israel continues to persevere and be a light to the nations. Kufi's Israel Collective brings us an amazing story today about Save a Child's Heart straight from Israel. Take a look. The essence of Save a Child's Heart is a child is a child, and we have the duty to, to provide medical care for all children, regardless of where they come from. And it really doesn't matter if the child coming to Save a Child's Heart is coming to us from the West Bank, from Gaza, or whether the child is coming to us from, from Syria or from Iraq. Every child deserves the best medical treatment that he can receive. And I think this is part of the ethics on which people involved with Save a Child's Heart have been brought up in. The 
Save a Child's Heart is a non-profit organization that provides life-saving heart procedures for children from developing countries. To date, the organization has saved the lives of more than 3,500 children from 48 countries here in Israel at the Wolfson Medical Center in Khoron. My role here is as a volunteer. Every time I come here, I just want to put smiles on the children's faces. Like, that's what I consider my role to be. But it is hard, as in, you come here and you think the children are just like every other child, but they really are sick. And it is sometimes hard not to take that home with you and worry about them and think about them because you do like fall so in love with them. And we're very proud that this is based on the core values that we believe in which bring, I think, out the best of Israel, but not only Israel, it's a combination of Israel but and Jewish values, Jewish values that each and every one of us has been brought up on, and the idea is, is life. Is this your daughter? Yes. How old are you? She's three. We're from West Bank. For follow-up for my daughter, Nada, she's my first daughter, and she was uh, one month, uh, they told us we we may go home without her. So they did a, a lot. They saved her and now she's uh, she's good. Now she can go to kindergarten and she grew up. I am Fatima from Kfar Qasim. My job basically, every Tuesday we have a Palestinian clinic as you see today. One day a week I make like a support group. I invite families, Palestinians or Israeli or anyone. Sometimes African, sometimes Syrian, Kurdish. We just talk and uh, share thoughts, share experiences. They can learn from each other. Because at the end of the day, they have the same problem. Children with heart problem or any other problem. You'll find Christians, Muslims, and Jews. They might come from Arab neighborhoods or from, from Jewish neighborhoods, but they have one thing in, in common and that is saving children's lives. I met many families here from Gaza, from the West Bank, from uh, Iraq. The real sad story is the fact that you have not operated on a single Egyptian girl. There is so much anti-Israeli propaganda in Cairo and places like this. It's going to look weird for people to come here and get treated. The closest we ever got was an Egyptian father trying to find a solution for his kid via the internet being in contact with our people in England. When he understood that the surgery was to happen here in Israel, the last sentence we heard from him was that I'd rather see my kid dead than treated by the Jew. It's not always what, what we see at TV, you know, on TV. There is relationship between both sides. They find that we are the same at the end. We are all the same. We are human. What they don't know is um, how they treat us. Like it's. Uh, very good. They have one aim, to save their children. You just realize that Israel contributes so much to the world and really does make a difference and I wish that everyone could see this side of Israel. It's beautiful. I'll just put a little bit story of a doctor here. When you're trained to be a physician, you're trained to, to treat everyone without any difference of color, of money, of religion, whatever. And Seve Charsat does that like every day. This is what one of the things, apart from medicine, that I'm planning to take back home. Treat everyone with love and make the world a better place. You know, I met here families who had uh, uh, negative views regarding Israel, but, but here they saved their, their lives, their children's lives. And I can only say to people who I meet wherever I go, come and join us. Coming up, some final thoughts on why you should care about the Hezbollah threat from the Lebanon border. It's the Watchmen, it's Kufi only on TBN. Stick around. We see it all over the internet, newspapers and television, as terror groups like ISIS, Hezbollah and Hamas terrorize Israel. Each year, the threat increases and intensifies. Will you pray for Israel? Will you confront government officials on behalf of Israel and the Jewish people? How will you answer God if you choose to do nothing? 
To see evil and not call it evil is evil. Not to speak is to speak. Not to act is to act. God will not hold us harmless. Stand up and speak up and do it now. Join KUFA, where 2.5 million Christians across the U.S. are working together to defend Israel in our classrooms, churches, and communities. They have an active presence in over 300 college campuses and mobilize their members to communicate pro-Israel perspectives to elected officials. Visit our website, cufi.org. Well, folks, thanks so much for joining us this week. And I have to say, I think this is one of the most important episodes of The Watchmen that we're ever going to do. I think it is so important for you at home, wherever you're at around the world, to know what is happening uh, on Israel's borders, in particular on its northern border here in southern Lebanon, Hezbollah country, where there's rockets, where there's missiles, where there's weapons stored in this very peaceful looking village that you see over my shoulder. This is a stronghold of the Iranian regime working through its proxy Hezbollah, one of the world's most dangerous terrorist organizations created, funded by Iran. Hezbollah, which has American blood on its hands, has killed more Americans than any terror group other than Al Qaeda. This is where they live and breathe. And we wanted to show you what Hezbollah is up to right here on Israel's northern border and how it affects you here at home. We're going to bring you this kind of material, this kind of inf information that you need to know. You know, the Bible says my people perish for lack of knowledge. It's not always the most pleasant information, but I think you'd rather know than not know what's lurking in places like this, southern Lebanon. So thank you for joining us this week on The Watchman. And until next time, God bless you, and remember, never hold your peace.